Hello everybody, this is From Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodman and this is Christopher Draves. Hello. And as I put out our page, we were going to be doing our show as we were eating. Kind of took a little snag in that, so um, got to get this done. So our show is uh, brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Locker, 2002 West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can uh, call them at 414-800-7585. You can get all your hockey needs, uh, ice skating, figure skating, you Rock name it. Gear. You name it. All your ice, indoor ice skating, uh, any sport you want. I don't know if they have speed skating. They might have roller blades or that gear. You can get Admiral jerseys like the one I'm currently wearing. Or you can get the White Predators jersey from Adidas. Yeah. Outside of that, today the Admirals played the hated Rosemont Wolves. I mean, Chicago. Yeah. Um, you can visit Hockey Locker at HockeyLockerMilwaukee.com. All right, break down this game. It was a 3-2 Admiral victory in a shootout. Bang. <laughs> All right, the first period, uh, Admirals outshot them 11-9. Uh, second period, it was 13-8 for the Wolves, and then 7-4 for the Wolves in the third. Uh, overtime, both teams were uh, three apiece as far as shots and overtime. Was uh, for a total, it was uh, 32 shots for the Wolves, 27 for the Admirals. Uh, the Wolves were 1 for 2 on the power play. Uh, the Admirals were 0 for 3. Uh, the Admirals had two penalties for four penalty minutes, and then the Wolves had three penalty minutes for a total, or three penalties for a total of six. Um, the other side of this is both goaltenders played well. Yeah, Dan actually did step up today. I'm surprised how good he played. Um, however, I did have a problem with the officiating. Some of those calls, I'm like, huh? Where'd that come from? Oh, you mean like the goalie interference? Yes. I'm like, where the heck did that come from? The guy gets shoved into the goal, then tripped on his way there, and he gets goalie interference. You cross-check the guy while another one of your teammates trips him. Sounds like somebody was, uh, like a, something WWE would do if they were wrestling with a, two hockey characters. Yeah. Um, so scoring in the first was Reed Duke with his eighth. Uh, was an assist for Patrick Brown. That was a Wolves goal. Um, we haven't got to talk about them much. We've been too busy talking about Rockford lately. Mm -hmm. And Grand Rapids. Um, there's been, then there was uh, Matthew Olivier with his seventh with an assist from Josh Wilkins, his eighth, and Steven Santini, his eighth. Uh, then Lucas Alvinus scored, Al Alvinus scored mm -hmm. his eighth with an assist from Brendan Peary, his 14th. And Curtis McKenzie, his 13th on the power play. Then we played catch up again, and Daniel Carr scored, burying his old team. Uh, with his 15th, with an assist from Frederick Allard, his 14th, and Matt Donovan, his 17th. Uh, scoring in the third, nothing. Scoring in overtime, nothing. Shootout. Shootout. Shooting first was Rem Pitlick, goal. Ray Reed Duke, no goal. Frederick Goudreau, no goal. Brandon Perry, no goal. Daniel Carr, no goal. Nicholas Waugh, no goal. That was your night. So, three stars of the game were Frederick Allard with an assist, Brandon Perry with an assist, and Matthew Olivier with a goal. Uh, goaltenders were Connor Ingram. He stopped 30 of 32. Um, and Oscar Dan stopped 24 of 26. Attendance was 2,316. Uh, referees were Brett Rowland and Steve, Stephen Renault. Uh, linesmen were Mike Daltrey and William Hancock. The Admirals this season are now 5 0 2 and 2. Or 1 and 1, sorry. 5 0 1 and 1. Against who? The Wolves. Uh, you didn't specify that. You just said this year the Admirals are. Well, I'm about to get into that part of it right now. Oh, the know. Admirals are 41 games played, 28 wins, 7 losses, 4 overtime losses, and 2 shootout losses. For 62 points, they're currently on a 4-game winning streak. 
and that ended Chicago's uh, three game. Um, we have a eight point lead over the Hartford Wolf Pack for the quote unquote AHL version of the President Trophy. Yeah. And divisionally, let's get into that because division uh, championships are nice to have. Um, they have a Ufka 13 point lead over the Iowa Wild. Hmm. Then after that, yeah. How do I explain that our division outside of us is hot garbage? Like the only team with a winning Iowa with with actual good winning record is Iowa. After that the Wolves have 19, 17, 3 and 2. The Stars are 18, 7, or 18, 17, 2 and 2. Rockford's 19, 18, 1 and 1 for 40 points. So, I mean, if we keep going on the pace we're going, we're going to hit 100 points in the season. It's not out of the realm of the possibility. The Admirals have 35 games left, so it is still a bit to go. Hmm. But, I mean, looking at it, us missing the playoffs, probably not going to happen. Hmm. Uh, the Admirals, barring a catastrophic meltdown. Yeah. I'm already prepared for a playoff run. How far? Who knows? All right, so, know all, so the around. only team climbing right now is the Texas Stars have worked their way into the fourth place position. And you said Manitoba's sitting there trying to do something too. Manitoba was another on a four game losing streak. No. What about San Antonio? What are they trying to do? Go backwards. Are they trying to get a top five draft pick? <laughs> the AHL don't draft, so choking oh, in yeah, this. Oh, yeah, good point. Yeah, choking, in this, to, choking in this league means your coach gets fired. Yeah. A la Dean Evanson. But the Golden Knights had a winning record, and they fired their coach. That just happened, guys. The Golden Knights fired their coach this afternoon. No one explained to me that the uh, Vegas owners... Oh, because they had a three-game losing streak. They fired their coach. They've been to the playoffs every season in their franchise. As matter of fact, they won a Stan- almost won the Stanley Cup. They went through to game seven. That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't, I don't understand how Vegas fired their coach. It was stupid, but that's Vegas and not us. Up next, we have the Anaheim Quackers. Who? Quackers. Who? The Quackers. Who? The Ducks. Who? I Man. don't know. Some people that play on a pond in Anaheim, even though there are no ponds in Anaheim. Yeah, there is. Yeah. <laughs> they do. It is the pond in Anaheim. Well, it's right, not, anyways, Arrowhead, tomorrow, it's not tomorrow, Arrowhead Pond Predators anymore. It's like Ducks. Honda Center or something. All right, anyways, tomorrow Predators play the Ducks. At home? Yeah. They'll be in Nashville. Uh, where are they? That'll be in Nashville, 7 o'clock Central Time. Yay! Which means we can get out of here by, like, not... Uh, the last o'clock. meeting... All right, the Predators are one for one against the Ducks. Uh, the Ducks beat the Predators in a shootout on January 5th. That was their last meeting between the two. All right, let's break down their uh, offense, if you could call it that. Mm-hmm. What's that? Well, we got Adam Henrique, uh, 14 goals, uh, 10 assists. Uh, Ryan Getzlaff, uh, 19 assists, 11 goals. Uh, Daniel Sprung, I'm assuming he just got called up because all he has is a goal and an assist. And nine shots. Yeah, so I'm assuming he literally his just time got of, called up. Uh, his time on ice is 15 minutes. Yep. Uh, Rich, Ricard Raquel, he has 10 goals, 15 assists. He's the only guy in their second line you have to worry about. He's their right winger. 
The third line, the only guy you have to worry about is probably Max Jones or uh, Sam Steele, who gets a lot of assists. And then Andre Kasha, who also gets a lot of assists and takes a lot of shots. He has 100 shots. And he has five goals. I mean, Max Jones. He's shooting like a stormtrooper. <laughs> he has a, he has a hundred shots and five goals. He's shooting like a stormtrooper. Yeah, but uh, their fourth line it's nothing. I'm not even gonna bring it up. Their defense ain't much better. Uh, what is it? Hampus Lindholm he has 16 assists, only one goal. Cam uh, Josh Fowler. Manson nothing. Uh, Cam Fowler is probably their best defenseman. He has nine goals and 14 assists this season. I mean. Yeah, their defense is garbage. The Predators should win this. Keyword should. <laughs> All right, so I'd say before, just stop a before we stick a win. fork in this not, this what, Anaheim. Go ahead. I'd say uh, stop Henrik and Getzlaff and probably Raquel on offense. Other than that, this should be an easy victory for the Preds. It should be. All right, so as far as that goes, as long as one of these two don't catch fire to tomorrow, um, you won't have to worry about it. John Gibson is their starter. He has 35 games played, uh, 13 wins, 19 losses, and three overtime losses with a .905 save percentage and a .299 goals against average with one shutout. How come he can't have a goal? Oh, wait, I forgot. We're the only one with one of those. Um, and then we have Ryan Miller, who is very undervalued. Um, he has 12 games played, uh, four wins, five losses, and two overtime losses with a .899 goals against, or .899 save percentage and a 3.20 goals against average. Kind of hard to have good stats when, well, as I saw in the last Ducks game, because I did go back and watch it, their goalies have been so irritated with their defensemen, they're actually checking them. Yeah. <laughs> I saw um, him check one of the his own defensemen into his own net. Yeah. He was just, I think they're getting sick of it there in Anaheim. So we'll see what happens. Hey, like I said, their defenseman, there's really nothing to really uh, worry about outside of Cam Fowler. Yep. So this is. Can you think of anybody you should worry about on Anaheim on defense? You saw their defensive pairings, they're garbage. No kid think of anything. But as I was saying, our, uh, this is from Milwaukee to Nashville, brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Locker, 2002 West Howard Avenue. Go there to get all your. Ice skating, figure skating, and hockey needs. That includes roller hockey. We will see you guys tomorrow. Peace.